What's up, Fobbits? Uh, Tweak here once again for Fob Equestria, home of the Military Brony, and I'm joined by the very lovely Cindy Morrow, one of the writers for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Cindy, thank you very much for sitting down with us. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Okay. Well, I always like to start off with something a little quirky, so tell us something that no one knows about you, that the fans, some random factoid that they've never heard about you. Um, I guess a, a random fact is that uh, I have perfect pitch. Oh. And I was actually a musician as a child, I studied music uh, quite seriously, and uh, although I drew, I didn't really get into drawing until college. Okay. Now, perfect pitch, that means you can hear a note and instantly replicate it? Is that what that is? Yes. Okay. That's, I'm insanely jealous of that. <laughs> I can, if, if someone asked me to play a song and I know the song, I can play it on the piano. I would be, if, another job I could have would be maybe like working in a bar. Like the piano ah. player at a bar. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, um, how many different kinds of conventions have you been to? Other than, I mean, and of those you've been to, how do you notice any differences between them and the My Little Pony conventions? Well, to be honest with you, I really haven't been to a lot of conventions. Okay. Um, I went to the LA Brony convention, which was fabulous. And probably before that, I'd only maybe gone to like a, what do they call it? Like a... E3. Yeah, E3, the uh, electronic Year, expo. Years ago, I used to work in CD-ROM, so we would go to those conventions. Oh, okay. Um, so, you, so you made all those really old, cheesy CD-ROM games? I did have a, a hand in that, yes. Okay, I know several nerd friends online who would want to meet you now even more. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, on that, uh, was it odd to you? Because I mean, usually when you go to conventions, you get voice actors and people like that. And, but writers don't necessarily get as much call, but at every Brony convention, there's almost always been a writer's panel. Has that, did that surprise you when they start asking you to participate in this? Um, it was a little surprising because uh, I've been an artist. I was a storyboard artist before I was a script writer. Um, so I know the work and effort that goes into other aspects of making a cartoon. So it seems surprising that me as a writer, I would get so much attention because I know so many other areas of production are equally as important. Okay. All right. Now, uh, speaking of the different parts of the job, there are a lot of people out there who believe that being a writer for TV would be a dream job, that it's all sunshine and gumdrops and rainbows. And uh, would you have anything to say to dispel that? What are the more stressful parts of your job? Um, I think the stressful part of being a writer, and I'm a freelance writer. Okay. So I'm not employed by one company. I have to either look for freelance jobs or through word of mouth, I have to be offered jobs. So I would say actually probably the most stressful part is um, getting the jobs. It's competitive and there's many, many good writers out there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's probably a myth is that, you know, it sounds fun that I often joke that I write in my pajamas at home, which I actually do. Um, so people think it's a dream job, but I still actually have to get the jobs and right. I have to prove that I'm worthy of the job. So you have to kind of put your name, you have to get your name out there and prove yourself to people. Oh sure, I always have to still submit scripts, I have to shop myself, um, I have to meet people and let them know what I do. It's not like, oh, here's Cindy Morrow, here's a job. It's never, yeah, so like here's a question, how ha has that dynamic changed at all? since you started working on My Little Pony, which is admittedly a very successful TV show, has it gotten a little bit easier, or would you say it's about the same as when you first kind of started in the business? Um, well, uh, I think it's better. I mean, I think p uh, many people recognize that My Little Pony is, is a good show. Okay. So obviously it's beneficial to be attached as a writer on that show. So okay. I think, yeah, it has helped me, definitely. Good. Well, we're, we're, we're happy to have helped. <laughs> so, uh, during the writing process, every author fears writer's block. Do you have, have you ever experienced that with the show? And would you have any tips on how to, to any aspiring authors out there, how they would get over that? Certainly, I have writer's, writer's block. Um, usually, it comes when I hit a hole in the story and I can't find a way to, to fix the hole. Something is not connecting or it's not making sense or I can't really explain why a character would be compelled to do something, you know, find sort of the logic behind it. Um, and for me, the best thing is really to 
to speak with my story editor, that's the, the first place that I'll go. Right. Um, and whoever the story editor is is always really helpful. They want you to succeed, and they obviously want to make less work for themselves. So they're going to help you um, go through those those issues. Okay. But that I don't know if you really mean like a creative writer's block or just you know a basic. Block. Well, I think I think with a lot of authors. I mean, you can think of how the plot goes and how it goes how you get from A to B to C, but it's the stuff between A and B and between B and C that kind of bothers people, sort of getting those little nitty gritty details. Mm. I I guess maybe I don't have as much issue with that. I'm a really visual person. Like I said, I was a storyboard artist before okay. I was a writer. So uh, when I'm writing, I'm completely visualizing down to camera cuts and uh, pans and you know fade outs and fade ins and. That part's not so hard. I have more problems sometimes with the, the actual story. Okay. Making sure the story makes sense. Okay. Uh, now, uh, because we are obviously a military-themed website, do you have any experience in your family or friends with as far as the military goes? Um, I don't personally have a lot of ex experience with the military. Um, my father was not in the military, um, and his his father uh, came from another country. Oh, okay. Um, so. Uh, not so much. My my husband's family uh, did have. He has an uncle who fought in Vietnam. Okay. So. All right. Well. No. I certainly appreciate all of you. Of oh well, thank you. Very we, much. We, Deep we, respect for all of you. We appreciate every time we hear that. It's, it's nice to hear people who work in the showbiz industry that actually do support us. So thank you very much for that. Um, when you're writing the stories, are you the kind of person that likes to do a very concrete outline, like plan bit by bit by bit how it goes, or do you just kind of do more? like stream of consciousness, just kind of free writing? Uh, I actually do like to to plan. Um, I really like, do like to write an outline, uh, fairly detailed. Not always so much the dialogue that can come, sort of, that can flow, but I really feel like, especially with My Little Pony, the story has to be solid. Right. And that's what people really, I think, appreciate, is that it's not just some flimsy story with some made up, you know, lesson at the end. It's a real true, a true story being told, and so, um, for me, it's really important to make sure that that's, that's solid. Okay. Have you ever had, I think we may have covered this a little earlier, but like been writing an episode and all of a sudden you realize that, wait a minute, this moral doesn't really kind of make sense or I've written myself into a corner. Has that ever happened with this show? And if it has, do you know how, what kind of things do you do to kind of work around it? or? Um, whenever that's happened, for me personally, um, I've always felt it at the very beginning. And I've told myself, no, 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 just start writing. Maybe it will, you know, work itself out. And occasionally it will, but I always kind of have a sense that if if I'm going to get stuck, it, it really should have been fixed at the very beginning. Okay, all right. That makes a whole lot of sense. Wow, that's actually that's actually pretty deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that one. Uh, okay, um, three seasons the show's been going on. And as you mentioned, the writers are primarily freelance. What kind of challenges do you face trying to keep characters and tone consistent through three seasons of TV shows when, I think M.A. Larson said, y'all don't have too, quite too much interaction other than at one point in the season? It's really difficult. Really? I think so, yeah. I, um, especially in the first season and the following ones, whenever a script would be completed and finalized, they would be sent to us and I would read them. Because we didn't have any uh, animation to look at or any finished episodes. Uh, and in the later seasons, it became easier because you could watch, you could watch the episodes and see how they they turned out, and that would help. But in general, it is very it's very difficult. And sometimes, as you'll see, some people say, "Oh, I can tell that was an M. A. Larson script," because you still put a little bit of yourself right in 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 your scripts. Right. You just you want to ask something. I know I've when. Uh, voice actors are asked in interviews whether or not they watch the show or what's their favorite episode. A lot of times they say, well, I don't watch the show too much regularly. Do you, when you write for a TV show, maybe not necessarily My Little Pony, but any show, do you make it a point to go back and watch it to see the finished product? And do you think that that helps or hin doing that would help or hinder the writing process for future episodes? Uh, it depends. If I'm going to continue writing on that, that show, it's going to be very important to watch every episode, especially just from a continuity point of view. You want to know what the characters are going through and what their arcs and you know what their changes are. So okay. it's actually just factually, you need to know what's going on. Um, I don't know that a finished episode really changes my, my personal um, view of a show or what I need to change personally about my writing so much. 
Okay. I guess that makes sense. No, no, it makes sense. It's, I, I ask because, you know, voice actor can add inflections. Artists can add visual cues and things that make make you think about things. But if I just well, I will. I mean, I will say, you know, being in the being in the business for long enough, you um, if you're smart, you get used to the idea that it's still a business. So you don't expect that everything that you put down on paper is going to be what you see. And sometimes it, it's quite different. And you just, you know, you just become accustomed that every step of the way there's going to be interaction. And it's a lot of it's going to be stuff that sometimes you wish you came up with, right? <laughs> um, and some stuff that you wish hadn't been put in. But that you really have to let go of that because you have no control. You just right. got to do what, you know, you can do. At the t when it's your time to do it. Work within the set parameters that you right. were given. Mm -hmm. And do and the then, best job you can do. And then just hope, you know, that hope that it's all going to follow through. And on My Little Pony, it mostly has. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I, I don't, I think, I think there's maybe one to two, maybe three episodes that people at most think aren't as good as the other ones. So, right. that, that, the, the, and that's personal preference I anyway. Know. You'll, see, you'll meet one person who loves an episode, and the, and the person right next to them hated that episode. It's all, you know, based on your personal. Yeah, but I think that yeah. says something for the quality that y'all do that you can have three seasons of a show and only a select few of the episodes. You know, and then even then there's a contention of where it's actually bad or just or just you heard it wrong or whatever. So, right. All right, uh, one of the another big thing that people enjoy about the show is the music and we're hoping we're desperately trying to get all that daniel ingram later but as i <laughs> as i understand it uh you the writers a lot of times will conceptualize the song as far as you will write lyrics and yes. maybe even do a simple beat and send that to daniel ingram and is that how it works how does that process i work think for it's you? different uh, there's nothing set in stone so for me personally um, I I have to write the the beginning lyrics because I know what's going on in the script in the, in the right. story, um, and so if I have an inspiration from uh, an existing song, which I usually try to do, I think it's helpful. If you ever interviewed Daniel, you can ask him if it's helpful or not. Um, I find a song that um, I want to sort of aspire that feeling of, and I send that along too. And sometimes I'll even write my lyrics kind of to that beat. Um, and he'll take it from there. So, as an example, um, for uh, oh, for those family reunion. Yeah, the Apple family. Apple the Raise family this reunion. barn. Thank you. They sometimes they change the titles. I get confused. Uh, Raise this barn. I researched square dance music, and oh. I found one uh, with a beat that I liked and I felt was kind of um, it, it would be sort of exciting as far as square dances go. And uh, so I wrote the lyrics and I sent that that song along to Daniel and said, you know, this is a square dance, so here's a sample. Although I'm sure he didn't really need a square dance sample, but... Okay. And, uh, you I have to ask this. I think you answered this at the panel yesterday, but our viewers weren't there. Have you heard of the misaligned interpretation of the lyrics of the song? The, the, the racist barn? Yeah, racist barn. I know, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny, you yeah. know, but... It's been one of those quirky things that I think only, only a brony would yeah. really catch up on and, and just latch onto for some reason, so... Yeah, I have heard of that. That's pretty funny. Okay. Have has has Daniel ever uh, taken something you gotten and either completely changed it or disregarded it and completely stunned you with what he sent back? Well, the first song that I wrote, "Winter Wrap Up," I actually did record a melody because I wasn't in informed about how much involvement or interaction uh, Daniel would want. Okay. So um, I just recorded kind of like a simple melody idea uh, to send to him with the lyrics. And he actually rewrote the entire song, and it's much, much better, of course. And then kept pretty much all the lyrics, except maybe he had to drop a word like and or add a the or something. So, right. um, and that gave me a really good indication about what he needed um, as, you know, a composer. Okay. But I mean, we all know he, he certainly can write lyrics. He doesn't necessarily need us to. And in fact, I believe when I worked on Care Bears, he did all of it. I think we wrote... I think that I wrote a note about, you know, this is what's supposed to happen, um, so write a song about it. Uh -huh. And in that show, so it's different. Okay, all right. Uh, well, I don't have any more questions. Uh, it's, is there anything else you would like to say? You have the the entire military Roni community watching. Well, we would hope we're that popular. If you do, anything you would like else you'd like to say or ask us or anything like that? Well, I, I guess I would just like to say thank you so much for um, taking care of us and um, supporting, supporting our, our nation 
And um, and thank you, of course, for supporting My Little Pony. Of course. Um, we lo I love having fans from all over and hearing, so um, I think it's fantastic that you have you have a, a group of you that um, enjoy right. the band and together. On behalf of us, we'd like to say thank you so much for the show, and it means a lot to a lot of people, so we appreciate what you've done for us. So basically everything you just said about us, I'm a flip around and show it back to well, you. Well, it really is equal likewise. I mean, it, it, it's really wonderful to know that you have an audience that appreciates your work. It does. It, it really does mean something, so... Okay, thank well, thank you, thank you, everybody. Ms. Moro, Cindy, thank you very much for coming up. I My appreciate pleasure. you. My pleasure. Thank you. And there'll be more interviews coming here, so stick around. Fob Equestria, front to rear, disappear. <laughs>